Here on my phone, I have some notes, just some quotes, literally TikTok comments, some quotes from TV shows, just sentences, little lines of dialogue that I think could make really cool 3D scenes. If we could have a character say them and have all the facial animation actually look really nice. So we're gonna see how quickly we can make that happen. And when I say quick, I do mean motion capture. Let's suit up. Now, part of the reason I wanna do this so quickly is I literally have to catch a flight in, I need to leave it an hour and a half. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that the whole animation has to be done in that time, but I'd prefer if everything I really needed to get it done were captured. I'm also not an actor. I'm an animator, which is about as close as we get in 3D, but you know, I'm gonna do my best. We're gonna try to get a salvageable performance and where my acting falls short, we're just gonna rely on the visuals, lighting, things like that. Now, unfortunately for me, this is the last time I get to put this suit on for a while because XN so kindly loaned it to me to make some of these videos and I have to give it back. So uh, please comment down below that you'd like them to let me borrow it again or let me keep it next time. Uh, maybe if enough people want to see more videos like this, we can convince them. <laughs> One of the other things that I was able to borrow have been these Manus motion capture gloves. They're very fancy. And I've been primarily using these because they've been on loan to me. But I do have some additional motion capture technology that I've been really looking forward to using. Stretch Sends has let me have some of their gloves, which I haven't showed you yet on this channel. I haven't done anything with them. Mostly just because I haven't had the time to dig into as many of these motion capture videos as I would have liked to. But I do plan on it, and I want to show off those gloves because they're a totally different technology. They're interesting, they're cool. Um, they are a bit easier to get on <laughs> than these with the little finger socks that I'm doing here. But anyways, that's what they look like. The suit, trackers go right in, and we're good to go. Uh, there is an empty port here in the suit, you can kind of see, coming from my wrist, which if you saw the other video with the robot scene that I created, I was doing prop tracking workflow, which is, that is exactly where you plug the prop tracker in, and then that goes to the sword or whatever object you're holding. Now when it comes to motion capture, I've worn an XN suit and I've worn a Rococo suit. Rococo also makes a head rig. As far as I'm aware, this is the most affordable option for some kind of head-mounted phone thing that you can put on and, and track yourself. I have made a DIY one using just a helmet from Walmart, a GoPro arm thing, and you can do that for about a hundred bucks. But this is a lot more stable and you actually get the camera centered. So anyway, we can talk about that another time. Today, this is what we're using. Now it's entirely possible that the motion capture gods will strike me down for combining Xsense and Rococo, but as far as I see it, we use what we got. I just realized one flaw in my plan here the notes I had were on my phone, but my phone also needs to record me, which means I need to be in a different app to do this process. So that was really smart of me. Oh man, I'm gonna have to type like an old person right now. I will send them to myself on Discord. How about that? Okay, now I'm gonna awkwardly turn to the side so I can still address you without that. So uh, here we go. So what we wanna do is open the Live Link Face app, which is free. And what it's going to do is allow us to record a performance and pump it directly into Unreal Engine. We can also do it live. We can have it sync up and live stream the data into Unreal Engine. So um, there's a variety of things we can do here. What I'm going to do is I'm just gonna record the takes and show you the process. So I'm gonna try to do some acting stuff, advice for animation out there or for anybody doing this process. Come up with your, your first choice, like come up with whatever you think of first and then flip it around. Like whatever the tone, the emotion, like the mood that, of whatever it is you're doing. So if, I, if my line is, you cannot kill me in a way that matters. I'm gonna start that with some kind of like laughing confidence. I'll do that first. And then I'm gonna go opposite. Laughing confidence. I'm gonna go with like sad unconfidence. I don't know what that's gonna be, but so we're gonna come up with two different characters and then we'll try some other stuff. So. If it's confident, it's a villain who is pretty much immortal here. <laughs> you cannot kill me in a way that matters. <laughs> you cannot kill me in a way that matters. I'm gonna start doing this in each take. If you're doing hand capture, just do the take number, because then you can just look at the data and you'll know, oh, this is number three. I'll do some kind of like, <laughs> You cannot kill me in a way that matters. So again, that was kind of supposed to be laughing confidence. Again, remember, I'm not an actor, doing my best here. 
Uh, I also have no prep time. I would probably have gone through a large kind of exercise that I have to come up with the acting choices here, but I'm not doing any of that. So I'm gonna go with dejected, sad, depressed about the thing. Maybe this person wants to go and they just... They just... You cannot kill me in a way that matters. You cannot kill me in a way that matters. You cannot kill me in a way that matters. All right, I tried. <laughs> I've taken some of the quotes that I like the most. I've put them all into a block in an order that I think kind of makes sense enough for now. And I'm going to act out this little sequence of things and we're gonna see what we get. You kneel before my throne unaware that it was born of lies. You cannot kill me in a way that matters. I will walk, ah, oh, damn it, I messed it up. You do not make judgments about things you cannot imagine. You kneel before my throne, unaware it was born of lies. You cannot kill me in a way that matters. I will face God and walk backwards into hell. I'm not very menacing, am I? I'm just not very scary. You do not ask questions that you can't handle the answer to. You don't make judgments about things you cannot imagine. You kneel before my throne, unaware it was born of lies. You cannot kill me in a way that matters. I will face God and walk backwards into hell. There we go. So to recap so far, we put on the suit, we put on the gloves, Calibrated both, stuck this on, opened up the face capture app, and recorded some performances. So far, so good. But let's go ahead and see what we got. And as you can see, we took that motion capture data from over here, and we popped it into a scene with a more villainous approach. I decided to go for the more evil character and do something different. And this video is sponsored by Dell and NVIDIA, so you can see the setup that I've been working with, the Dell Precision 7780 mobile workstation, as well as the Dell monitor and peripherals. And so this is exactly the configuration that I've been working with to do this project. And in full transparency, the time between filming the initial clip that you saw and now is a bigger gap than you might expect. I have had to do various trips and projects and things, and this laptop has come with me for a lot of those projects. This has been my desktop replacement when I'm not home to use my desktop, or even when I am using my desktop computer. I've been doing like a two PC streaming setup type thing for meetings and classes and stuff like that, and this has actually been the streaming PC because it's so powerful. With the NVIDIA RTX 5000 GPU inside this computer, I've got 16 gigs of VRAM to work with, and a really powerful graphics card to keep all of the stuff in Unreal looking good all the way through. And that makes a big difference because I've been using a MetaHuman at the highest level of quality with all the hair and everything else with the level of detail forced to zero, or meaning the highest level of detail available to me with these MetaHumans, and these can get pretty heavy. So between the NVIDIA RTX 5000 and just the raw power of the workstation itself, this setup has been very well equipped for the entire process you're about to see. So this gets my genuine like thumbs up. I'm super happy with it. So big thanks to Dell and NVIDIA for sending it to me because it's been great. Now back to our project, the first step is to create the MetaHuman. And this is super easy. The MetaHuman Creator is a web-based tool that you can just load up and create your character. And when you're finished, you just load up the Quixel Bridge, pick your quality setting and pop them into your project. I decided to go for all the highest settings for this to have the most high fidelity character for close-ups as possible. And from here, we can kind of go either way. We can either do the facial animation or the body animation. They are two separate processes. They are two separate capture sources. I'm gonna start with the body animation because it's a little bit more familiar and it's ultimately the base that we're gonna build off of and add facial capture to. We take that motion capture software from the XN's MVM software and all we really need to do is hit the HD reprocess button. It will then go clean up any jitter, feet sliding, anything that might be weird with the data and it does a really good job. So from there, we'll just bring that into Unreal as an FBX file, and we do need to grab the skeletal mesh asset from their website so that we have somewhere to put all this data, and we'll export it as an FBX to throw on that skeleton in Unreal. If I skipped that skeleton step, Unreal wouldn't know like how many bones are in this skeleton or how to apply the data, and things would just look really broken. And to move the information from one skeleton to the actual character, we just need to set up an IK retargeting asset. Now in 5.4, this is really easy because there's an auto retargeter. So this is a really painless process now to just set that up and have one skeleton deform the other. Now it's not perfect. We could do some little tweaks and get it just right, but I think it's fine. It looks really good. Let's just move forward. And now we have our animation data on a metahuman. Although metahumans are not standard skeletal mesh assets, they're collections of skeletal mesh. They are a blueprint of different pieces added together. 
which means we don't have a head. But the other thing that's missing is the hands, which is weird, because if you remember, I put on gloves, I forgot to charge those gloves, which means they died somewhere in the middle of my takes, and I don't have finger data for this particular shot that I decided to choose. That is entirely my fault, and honestly would have warranted an entire reshoot. I would have just started over, reshot it. It would have been way faster, except I had already given back the hardware. I didn't have it anymore. It's been returned at this point, and I can't reshoot. So, we have a few options. I could manually animate about 3,000 frames of wrist and finger animation, but that sounds like my personal hell, so I'm not going to do that. In this particular case, I'm just going to ADR the hands. I'm going to re-record them using different hardware. As you might know from a much older video, I have a Rococo smart suit and the smart gloves, and I recently got the Rococo Coil Pro. It's this little base station that sends out an electromagnetic bubble that within that it gives you like much more accurate positioning data for the hands, the gloves, that kind of stuff. And it takes the gloves from okay to actually really, really solid. I'm extremely impressed by that. So I plugged that in, I tried it out, and I basically just watched myself give the performance and redid the hand animation and just popped it in later. Worked great. Only took me two takes, and then we just export to FBX, pop that in, good to go. What was weird about it is because I told the gloves to be part of a body when I wasn't wearing the suit, it did export body data, and it sort of just took a best guess of what it thought I must be doing in a suit that I wasn't wearing which was interesting, <laughs> but it was easy enough to get rid of. I just took all the keyframes for the body, zeroed them out, and deleted them. And because I'm working in Unreal 5.4, I have all the layered control rig stuff to just help me blend these animations together. So with one set of animation coming from the body and another set of animation coming from the hands, I layer them together, I rebake it as a new animation sequence, and we're good to go. Now this whole process took a lot longer than I was hoping, but that's mostly because of the gloves not having battery and then having to combine technologies and figure out how to combine them later. It would have been much faster to just reshoot, but since that wasn't an option, here we are. Now we get to move into facial animation. I used the LiveLink face app to record my performance, and it gave me both a video file and like a depth pass of information, all of which Unreal is going to read and process for us. By feeding it the reference information and making small adjustments to like where the different lines are on your face, it will actually solve a 3D version of you as a metahuman using that whole skeleton system. Now this process does not work well with facial hair. It even tells you that it's not really designed to do that, it doesn't know how to read your facial features, and it just sort of adds all of this to your mass. It's not very flattering. And after it humbled me, I was like, you know, I'm really glad I'm using a different metahuman for the actual performance and not trying to make myself in 3D, because I don't think this is a very good representation of what I look like. Now it actually does a really good job of, you know, shaping certain facial features to match how you look, but again, if you don't have facial hair, you'll have a better experience using this than I did. I've seen this work great for other people, and it just is what it is in this case. Now you may notice that the voice is a little bit deeper than when I recorded it, and that's because I actually used AI to alter my voice. My original plan would have been to just hire somebody, a voice actor, but because the performance had to be my exact performance from when I recorded it, because it's so tied to all my movements and facial expressions and everything else, it had to stay my voice. But as I pointed out earlier, I'm not very scary. So I used a website where I could alter my voice using AI to create this other persona. And to quickly shout out that there are other AI tools I could have used to accomplish these types of facial animation movements. For example, NVIDIA's audio to face allows me to just push that audio in and I can apply it to either a human or an alien. I can adjust expressions and so on. And this was way less steps, but ultimately not what I was trying to accomplish for this video. Now the most significant roadblock in this entire process came after we had the facial animation done. The body animation has information all the way up to the neck and the head of saying what the body should be doing. But the facial animation from MetaHuman Animator contains the face as well as head and neck information too. So when you put both of those on the same MetaHuman, the neck and head is sort of being pulled in two different directions because it's got two different data sources telling it what to do. And my solution was to go into the blueprint and create blend masks, basically a way to isolate certain controls and say that, hey, for the head and the neck, we're gonna have two different inputs of animation coming in. We either do or don't want to allow those different animation sources to affect those bones. So I could basically just say that for the body animation, all that stuff is allowed to go to the head and neck, and for the metahuman animator stuff, we are to apply all that data to everything except for those bones. So it sort of just masks out what the animation can see as far as like bones in the hierarchy. With that solved, it means that the regular motion capture data applies to the entire body, and the metahuman animation stuff only goes to the face and doesn't affect anything else. Then they're in sync, and we're good to go. 
Now from here, our process is basically done. We've set everything up. I can now go recapture new data and just plug it back in and it'll all work a lot more seamlessly. And all that's left is to either adjust the animation and polish it up. We could do more custom animation on top of it, layer stuff in, you know, strip stuff out, redo it if we want to, if we want to make it that much better and give it that custom feel to make it feel a little bit less like motion capture and a little bit less metahuman-y with the way that the mouth always seems to talk over here and things like that. But that's not the point of this project. I really just wanted to learn the motion capture process and workflow. And so at this point, we can watch our performance. You. You do not ask questions that you cannot handle the answer to. You do not make judgments about things you cannot imagine. You kneel before my throne, unaware it was born of lies. You cannot kill me in a way that matters. I will face God and walk backwards into hell. <laughs> all right, that's all you got. Now I know the dialogue and the acting are questionable at best. It makes no sense. And it's nothing that we would put in a real movie or TV show or anything like that. But again, that wasn't the point. It was an experiment to learn. And if you get hung up on all those other things along the way, you'll never make anything. So there is so much more to this topic that if you have anything you want to share, please leave it in the comments for other people to learn from. I kind of just glazed over a lot of the stuff in this video because this would have been a really long tutorial if I had told you every single step along the way. I wanted to keep it kind of high level so we could just see the overview of the process. But we will do more videos on these topics. If you have any questions, if you have any requests, please leave them down below so I can read through them. And once again, a huge thank you to our sponsors, Dell and Nvidia for providing providing such amazing hardware for me to do these types of projects on and giving me the opportunity to do this kind of stuff, to finally take on these types of projects and try this out. Because it's time consuming to figure all this out and root through the documentation and watch all the tutorials. And when there's not tutorials or documentation for the things I run into, I have to just try stuff until I figure it out. And when I do, I typically write it into a note. I have like a whole log of everything I did to do this project. I just keep those for myself, but if it's beneficial to you that I share them, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and if you enjoyed this, leave a like. It actually does help a ton. Here are some additional videos if you want to see other stuff on the channel. And with that, thank you so much for watching. I'm Sir Wade, and I'll see you in the next video.